Hey team, we're going to learn how to create a custom image placeholder service using Cloudinary and Netlify functions. I'm Colby Fayok, and if this is your first time here, make sure you hit subscribe and click the little notification bell for future web dev content. If you've dealt with design or building pages before when you don't necessarily have the content yet, you might be familiar with Lorem Ipsum, where it's giving you the ability to just have placeholder content, which is in not really a real language, it's just simply dummy text, giving you the ability to kind of fill out a page to see what it looks like before you can actually build it itself. Well, the same thing applies with images, where if we look at Lorem Pixum here, it's giving us the ability to have placeholder images, where if we give this URL to one of our image tags and we specify the width and the height, we're going to get exactly that. And if I open it up in a new tab, we're gonna see that image. So we're gonna create our own custom image placeholder service where we can use our own custom URL, add whatever features we like, and have our ability to add our own placeholders in our site. So starting off, we're going to use Cloudinary, which is a media platform that gives us a lot of capabilities, where in particular, we're interested in the media API, the programmable media, where we're able to use a simple URL to dynamically generate an image. In order to process this request and actually dynamically pull in all those parameters, we're going to use Netlify, and in particular, we're going to use Netlify functions. Netlify functions are basically just a serverless function, but it gives us an easy way to spin one up inside of an API endpoint, where all we have to do is really configure our endpoint, add our existing logic, and we're ready to go. So to start off our project, we're gonna start from scratch, where I'm going to create a new NPM project. And to do that, the first thing I need is my new directory. So I'm gonna make dir my placeholder. I'm going to CD into that directory, but then I'm going to run NPM init where this is going to install or rather initialize NPM for me so that later I can install any of my NPM packages that I want, particularly Cloudinary, which we'll use to transform our image. Now, additionally, I wanna prepare my repository for being able to deploy this and later actually store it in GitHub. So I'm gonna run git init, which is also going to start it for git, where then I'm going to also open this up inside of VS Code, where then once I have that open, I'm going to create a new file called git ignore, where inside I can add my node underscore modules so that when I do install any of my packages from NPM, it doesn't try to store that entire directory inside of my git history. But now we're ready to go so we can get started actually building out our new serverless function from Netlify. And to do that, we have three parts. First of all, we have our file-based configuration from Netlify, which we'll use our netlify.toml file. We're gonna have our functions directory, which we'll define in that configuration file. And then we'll finally have our function file, which is where we're going to do the processing. So to start, let's create a new file called netlify.toml. And inside, I want to specify build, and I'm going to add that in brackets, brackets, then add an indent, and I'm going to say I want my functions to be located in the functions directory. So next, we want to actually define that functions directory. So I'm going to create a new folder. I'm going to call it functions, and inside, I'm going to say I want to create a new file called placeholder.js, which is where we're going to have our serverless function. Now I'm going to copy and paste this snippet in, but we can run through it right here where we're first defining an export of handler, which is the function that Netlify is gonna grab and invoke, but we're defining an async function, which is going to return a promise where we're gonna get two arguments, our event and our context, which gives more information about the actual function that's getting invoked as well as the context of that. But ultimately it's a function that's going to return this body, which includes the status code of whether it was successful or not, and the body itself where we're going to JSON stringify the actual JSON response. Now later we'll see how we can change this to a redirect, which is how we'll use it in practice. Now this is literally all we need to do to get a new serverless function API endpoint up and running. But to test this out, we're gonna use the Netlify CLI. The Netlify CLI can do a ton of things when working with Netlify from your command line, but it particularly allows us to run Netlify dev, which is going to give us a Netlify-like experience for the Netlify production-like experience, rather, when we're trying to work on our project locally. So that means we're going to spin up a local development server so that we can see how this function actually works. So I already have the CLI installed, but all you need to do is run npm install Netlify CLI minus G. You can find it in the docs, and then you can run Netlify particularly Particularly, we're going to run Netlify dev, which you can see under run a local development environment, where we can actually start getting ready. So with that said, I'm going to run Netlify dev inside of my terminal, which is going to spin up a new local development server, where we can see that one thing that it does is it opens up a new tab inside of our browser or a new window, where it's going to say not found. But that's because we're not currently serving a web app from the root of our project, which is what that base URL is going to look for. But what we're looking for is where our functions are located, and that's going to be at slash dot netlify slash functions 
slash placeholder, where as you could probably see from my history, I've gone to this before as I was testing this out. But if I now go to that URL, we can see that my function is going to load and respond and I get that status of okay. And if we go to the terminal, we can even see that it was invoked and we get the information about that. So we can see that our function is working, but ultimately we want to be able to pass in parameters so that we can take those parameters and turn it into an image URL. So the way that we're going to do this is we're going to do it very similar to what we saw in the lorem pixum, but we're going to say, how about slash width slash height, and we can see that I'm using the same parameters as I did before, what this is going to do, and we can define these really however we want, but in this case, I'm going to say that I want to have my width and my height and then my background color. And then we can destructure these values, grab them inside of that request and use them to generate our image. So I'm gonna to go to that URL and we can see that it loads completely fine, but now we'll have access to it. Now the way that we'll have access to that is inside of the event argument. So I'm going to destructure the path from my event, which is exactly what I want. And let's console log this out so that we can see what that value looks like. If I now refresh that function invocation and go to my terminal, we can see that the path was logged out as slash Netlify functions, placeholder, as well as all those values. So I'm going to extract those values from this URL. And the way that I can do that is since I know that that beginning of the function is always going to be the same, I'm going to simply strip it. So how about we say constant params path is equal to path.replace. I'm gonna paste in that full value. I'm gonna say I'm gonna replace it with nothing so that we can strip everything from that. Now let's see what that value looks like. So I'm gonna console log out params path and we can see that we now only have those parameters. But now what we can do is we can split this using the split method by the slash so that we can break this up easily into an array. So I'm gonna say constant params is equal to params path dot split, where I'm gonna split it by that slash, and I'm gonna do one more thing. And one thing that's interesting about JavaScript is if I split that params path and it has a beginning slash to it, it's going to add an empty item to the beginning of the array, which I'll show you in a second. So we're gonna add a filter, where I'm gonna say for the param, we wanna make sure that the param exists before we actually return it. So let's console log that out. And as I mentioned, we now have the array with those different parameters, but let's see what happens with that split that I was talking about. If I start to type a string similar to what we have, and it's not exactly, but if I have split on here and I add my slash, we can see that it's going to give me that first value as an empty object or empty string. So that's why I'm adding that filter there so that when we actually make sure that it is a value, we're only gonna get the values that we need. Now you might be asking, why didn't we just add it to this replace function so that it gets stripped out altogether? As we'll see later, we're going to have the path in a different format because we're going to add a redirect to make it a little bit of a shorter URL. We'll get to that in a, in a little bit here, but we wanna make sure that we're covering any kind of instance of that path coming through to make sure our parameters are solid. But now that we have those params, rather than actually having that simple params object, which we don't really need, let's just destructure these values into what we need. So when these come back, it's going to have an array with the first, second, and third place for what those are. So let's destructure that as such, where we have our width, our height, and our background. And just to make sure that's clear, we see that we have this array and we're using destructuring so that we can say this first place or the zero index is going to be our width, the second or the one index, and the third or the uh, second index is going to be as such where we can grab the width, height, and the background. If you want to learn more about destructuring, whether it's arrays or objects, check out my video that I'm linked to above. But now we have our params, and just to make sure that you trust me that it is working, let's console log these out to see that it's working, where I can have all them in different logs. And when I refresh and look at the terminal, we have all of our params. So finally, we've deconstructed our URL so that we can have our parameters. Now we're ready to bring in Cloudinary so that we can actually use those to generate our image. So the way that we're gonna start off is using the Cloudinary Node SDK. Now there's a lot of stuff that we can do with this SDK, but really what we're interested in generating that URL. So the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is actually install it as a dependency. So I'm gonna cancel my server and I'm gonna run npm install Cloudinary. And once it's done, I'm gonna spin back up my development server. But now at the top of our function, we can import that. So I'm gonna say constant Cloudinary is equal to require Cloudinary, but we wanna grab v2 of the Cloudinary library. So we're gonna append that dot v2 at the end there. But now we have Cloudinary and the next thing we need to do is configure it. So we're gonna say cloudinary.config and we wanna pass in our cloud name. Now, how do you find your cloud name? 
Once you're logged into your Cloudinary account and you head to the dashboard, you can see right at the top, we have all of our information relating to our account details to use it programmatically. But right now, all we need is our cloud name and it's literally right at the top. So I'm gonna click copy and I'm gonna paste that in as my value. And remember to use your cloud name. Otherwise you're gonna be subject to my just simple public free demo and you're not gonna get any benefit out of that anyway. So make sure you're using your cloud name there. But now we can start using Cloudinary to generate our URL. So the way this is going to work is I'm going to create a constant called URL, and that's going to be equal to cloudinary.url, which is going to be a method that we're going to invoke. And we're ultimately going, going to be passing in our public ID, which is going to reference an image that we have already up to, uploaded to Cloudinary. Now, we don't necessarily need an actual image. We just need something there so that we can take that and we're going to transform it dynamically into whatever the placeholder we need is. So the way that I handled this is I literally created a one by one pixel. It was white and I uploaded that to my Cloudinary account and I called it simply white, where I'm going to be able to use that as my public ID. Now, again, this is just simply a one by one pixel image and I can include the link to it inside of the YouTube description here, but really it can be anything. The ultimate goal is that we just need some kind of image in there to base our, requ our request off of. But that said, I'm going to grab my public ID from the top here, and I'm going to paste it in inside of that Cloudinary URL method. And instead of passing in our parameters, let's now console log out that URL to see what we have. So now when I refresh and I go to my terminal, we can see that we now get that URL. And if I open it up inside of a new tab, we can see that we get that pixel that I actually uploaded to my account. So what we can do is we can take this and we can expand it and transform it to exactly what we need. So to start, I'm going to add in a second argument to this cloudinary.url function where I'm going to pass in the width, I'm going to pass in the height, and let's start there just to see what we get. We can see that already we're going to get our URL, where now we don't have just a simple one by one pixel, we have that 300 by 400 image. And if we go back to our URL and change that, how about 600 by 400, and I go back to my terminal and open that up, we can see that we're dynamically generating that image based on the sizes that we're passing into our function URL. But now we have one last thing that we're adding and that's the background. We wanna change the color of this. And to do this, we're going to use a transformation effect. In particular, we're going to use the colorize feature, which is an effect that we can pass in. And if we go to this cookbook page where we have color picture, we can actually do a lot of really cool things with it where we can change the color of the image itself. But really, we just wanna change everything about it. And if we look at the node code, because that's what we're working with, we wanna pass in the effect which is going to be colorized, and we're going to want to pass in the color where instead of purple, the name of it, which we could definitely add in, we want to use the actual hex value. So that's what we'll pass in. So I'm going to say effect colorize, if I spell it right, and I'm going to say the color is going to be equal to this background color. But there's one trick here. We're not passing in the full hex value, including the hashtag in front of that. And we want to make sure when we're passing that to Cloudinary, we include it. So I'm going to create a dynamic value out of this, and I'm going to say that I want to make sure that background gets passed in, but I'm going to append that hashtag in front of it. And you ask, why don't we put that in the URL itself? Well, the hashtag is actually a legit part of a URL API. So that can throw some issues with it. And plus, it's just a little simpler to only have to define that hex value. So we're going to append it to it. And now let's see what this URL looks like. Now, once I open up that URL, we can see we have that same size shape, but now it's red. And if we go back to our service and I say, how about zero, one, two, three, four with the Fs, and I'm going to look in the terminal for that one, we can see that it now changed colors to teal. Now, the ultimate goal for this endpoint is for us to take this URL and actually use it in an image tag. Right now, it just returns that JSON, which isn't what we need. We want to return a redirect so that anytime an image tries to use this URL, it's going to just elegantly redirect to our Cloudinary URL. So to do that, we're going to replace our status code with a 302 or a temporary redirect. And instead of the body, we're going to pass in the headers where we're going to say we want the location to be that URL. Now, before we reload the page, I definitely recommend adding this URL to your clipboard. Otherwise, it might get lost with that redirect. But let's see what happens. Let's open up a new tab and paste in that same URL. And we can see that it was immediately redirected to that Cloudinary URL. We didn't have to open that up inside the terminal. That's exactly what happened right inside of the browser. We can even see this working in practice where if I paste this into an actual image tag and I look inside of my app, I can see that image. Now, if I go to my network tab and I select my image, 
or if I just refresh the page, since there's not going to be a lot of stuff in here, we can see that initial request go to that local, the .NET 5 function placeholder where we pass in our params. But we see that 302 found request where it then passes it to the Cloudinary URL. So ultimately this is loading that Cloudinary URL dynamically. So we now have this API built but we can make it a little bit easier for people to use. Instead of having to include the Netlify functions placeholder every time, which is just a little bit longer, I'd like to have this really short URL so that when I have myplaceholder.com, I can just get started into the parameters. So to do this, we're going to use Netlify redirects. If we open back up our project and go to our netlify.toml, we're going to create a new section called redirects. And notice how I'm adding that in double brackets this time. But we're gonna say we want from, where I want all traffic to go through this. Now, if I wanna have just a subdirectory such as slash placeholder go to it, or even something slash P, so that I still can use the rest of my domain for something, that's totally cool too. But for me, I'm going to have a domain dedicated to this image service. So I'm just gonna have all traffic run through this. But I also want to have this star because what this is going to do is it's going to basically act as a catch all. So anything that comes after that initial domain or path is going to be passed along to my redirect. Speaking of which, I want this to go to where I'm going to say I want it to go to dot netlify slash functions slash placeholder, where I'm going to add at the end of that a colon splat, which is telling Netlify that anything that was inside of this star that was after that URL, I wanna pass right into the end of that splat. Now, the only other thing I wanna do is I wanna set a status of 200 when I have this ran. That way we can have a successful response and redirect to that particular image. But now after we save that file, we can actually see that Netlify is going to automatically reload those headers and redirects for us from Netlify Toml. But if we go to our URL, I'm gonna copy and paste this into a new tab because again, we should get redirected. But if I remove the .netlify slash functions where I just have localhost slash 600 slash 400 and my background color, I'm gonna to go to that URL and we can see that just like before I was redirected over with our nice and simple API rather than having to specify that entire function every single time. Now, the cool thing is we can take this a step further if we want. I'm going to stop here, but we can do things like adding real pictures. Maybe we can grab a random image from Unsplash based off of a search term that somebody appends to the end, such as people. Or I can also do things like overlay text. Since we have Cloudinary, we can really do whatever we want with this. And I can add text saying the dimensions of that particular image, maybe the color, really whatever we want to do when we're creating these placeholder images. What's your favorite use case or what's your funniest use case for using filler content for your application? I personally like fillerama.io where I can have some nice Futurama based text inside of my application. But what's your favorite? If you want to learn more about some of the cool things you can do with the Cloudinary API, including adding those overlays, adding text overlays or images, check out my video personalized social media cards for landing pages with Next.js and Cloudinary. Or if you want to learn more about all the cool Cloudinary effects and filters that you get out of the box by simply using the URL API, check out my video webcam photo filters and effects in React with Cloudinary. If you like this video, make sure you hit thumbs up, subscribe, and click that little notification bell for future web dev content. Thanks for watching.